What's up guys? It's Patricia from TarantulaHeaven.com. Uh, right here we have Miss Spidey, my grandma's Dola Rosea. She's kind of hiding in the back of her tank, so um, I'm hoping she kind of moves out so that you can see her. But today will be a short, quick video about things to stay on top of now that, well, in my particular place in the world, it is winter and it is cold. Um, I think I do some sort of version of this video every year, but it's good to keep this top of mind for everybody. And you can always go back through my channel um, to see what other ones I have done, such as preparing for emergency situations, how to use a space heater in your tarantula room, um, things like that, which I'll link to below. Um, but anyway, here are some things to keep in consideration. And I apologize if my voice is a little bit nasally. I am recovering from my second round with COVID and the exhaustion and everything is real. So if I haven't been answering comments as fast as I usually do, that is why I am resting a lot. But today I felt well enough to make some videos and so here we are. So the biggest thing is that you wanna make sure that your tarantulas or any type of reptile or pet that really uh, needs help regulating its temperature because tarantulas and uh, Creatures like tarantulas and spiders do not have the ability to regulate their own body temperature. So you want to make sure that there's some way to regulate the temperature in the room that they are in. Many of us um, have central heating, which is a wonderful thing, particularly for my comfort in the winter, but also for Spidey too, because I used to have to do a whole system with space heaters and stuff. And I don't have to do that anymore because the house just stays nice and warm. Um, so that is something that um, simplifies things, but many of us don't have that. Um, many of our houses might be older or we might be in apartment buildings, all sorts of living situations. So um, take stock of the particular room that your tarantulas are in. If there is a room that you usually keep them in that gets particularly cold, during the winter, I would see if you can move them to a different space for a few months. But if you can't, like if this is the only room that's safe for them because you have pets and it's the only room that you can kind of close off, then maybe you want to get some sort of heating mechanism for them. I've done this with space heaters before, um, having a, a space heater with safety features such as temperature controls. Um, turns off if you knock it over, things like that. Turns off when it gets to a certain temperature. Safety is really, really important with the space heaters. Um, you can also do things like um, there are certain temperature gauges that you can buy. People use things like heat maps. I personally do not feel comfortable with that. I know that there are a lot of ways that you can make that safer, but I have just heard too many horror stories when it comes to heat maps and what happens with our spiders. I've just heard of a lot of really terrible stories about how spiders have gotten burnt, overheated, um, all sorts of things, how these things malfunction. So be very, very careful if you are to use something like that. Tarantulas in particular do not need any type of heating lamp. That can also cause a lot of issues too. So be very, very mindful about that. I, I generally feel like it's better to control their temperature from afar so that they don't scorch themselves. So you just wanna do a lot of really good research around your heating sources. And if you can provide indirect heat, I think that's a lot safer. The other thing to consider um, with heat is that keeping your home warm or like our heating requirements might actually make your tarantula's water bowl evaporate faster or dry up faster. So you want to kind of stay more on top of the water dish more than usual during the winter months. I certainly noticed that Spidey's water dish will be full one day and then it needs to be refilled a lot more regularly. So uh, definitely stay on top of that. You do not want your spiders to become dehydrated. And then another thing that I think is really important is to be mindful that your tarantula's appetite might change. So we always have to stay on top of whether there are live feeders in the tank. One, because we wanna make sure that our tarantula isn't going to be put in danger in case they are in pre-molt, but also because your tarantula's appetite might actually slow down 
in the winter months. Mine certainly does. And so you might want to um, just be mindful of when you're leaving live prey in the tank in case you want to live, give them a few hours to kind of catch it and eat. Um, if they're not, if they are not eating, be mindful to take these critters out of the tank so that they don't, you know, reproduce and ruin the substrate or in case your tarantula actually does molt and then then they might actually be a danger to your spider. And uh, another really important consideration, and this is for those of you who may have your tarantulas like in a basement or in an outdoor shed, or who might live in very, very cold climates, not so much an issue for me where I am in the world, but I have heard this happen to a lot of people, is to have a backup source of heat. So sometimes if we live in a place where there are a lot of storms, a lot of snow, a lot of really crazy weather, our power can go out. And we may have tarantulas that are particularly sensitive to temperature fluctuations and need to be in a regulated environment, can't really survive without it. And uh, many of you may live in places where, um, you know, for us here, um, living in a major city, when, we, when the power goes out, it goes on pretty quickly, but for you, you may live in a place where in the country, you may be without power for hours or days perhaps. And you wanna make sure that you have some sort of backup plan for your tarantulas um, because you don't wanna lose them. You know, being without power is difficult enough. Worrying about your food spoiling, worrying about getting warm, staying safe, all those things. The last thing that you really want to be worried about is also having pets that are um, possibly not going to survive. So take that off of yourself. I mean, of course, having a backup heat source for yourself is amazing. <laughs> but um, I certainly know that for um, tarantulas, they're a lot more temperature sensitive than we are. And so you will probably survive, but I don't know about your spiders. So. Um, just have some sort of plan in place and I will certainly link a video um, in which I talked a bit about that, about you know what to do in emergencies and uh, this is something that Richard Stewart from the Tarantula Collective has also touched upon that I think is just really really important. We should never be scrambling at the last minute figuring out what we're going to do because a certain situation has transpired, um, especially if we know that we live in a place or a climate where these things can happen a lot. So those are just some sort of, uh, some winter considerations for you if you are living in a place in the world where the, the winter season is upon us. It's just the kind of weatherproof your tarantula keeping. So let me know what you think. Let me know what you do to prepare for winter and how your tarantula keeping changes throughout the season. I would love to hear about it. And I hope you guys are having a safe, cozy winter and that you are all healthy. <laughs> And uh, I will be back next week for another Tarantula Tuesday. Take care. Bye-bye.